We are less than two weeks away from the start of the legislative session, and it looks like the big issues beginning February 1st are shaping up to be paying for Medicaid expansion, crafting the 2022 budget, and redistricting mandated by the 2020 census. Jason Doral has a report from 23rd and Lincoln. The budget picture for the state of Oklahoma's next fiscal year is still up in the air because of the pandemic's impact on the economy, making information gathering crucial for legislators. We're having our budget hearings, and so our subcommittees are meeting uh, all this week and all next week, uh, pulling together the numbers. And of course, as you know, the February numbers are the one we'll build the budget off of. We have members of my caucus on every one of the subcommittees, so I try to to pick a person from my caucus who's interested and knowledgeable about that. It'll be mid-February before budget negotiators will know how much the legislature will be allowed to spend. The economy is coming back and uh, right now it looks good. And uh, one of the great things is oil has been over $50 a barrel. And uh, so we're budgeted this year to about $29 a barrel uh, on oil. And so right now uh, we see some good things happening. So, so far we're bringing in more revenue than predicted, which will be very good for next year's budget. Um, we will see in February what numbers they give us to go on. And it's very hard to predict right now what this new economy is going to look like. Hearings are being held at the Capitol with agency leaders making requests for the next fiscal year, but looming large over the budget process paying for Medicaid expansion. So one of the things that I'm very strong on is we will not use one-time money for an ongoing expense. And so whenever people voted on this and put it in the Constitution, then it is an ongoing expense every year. I mean, the first year is going to be hard. There's no question. There were lots of different proposals for how to fund it. Um, but the people have spoken, so certainly we have to answer that call. It's estimated by the Oklahoma Health Care Authority that the legislature will need to come up with about $164 million for the federal matching funds to start coming to the state. We're going to have to take a very close look at where those funds are going to come from. Uh, there was concern, I have concern that the governor put out RFPs for a managed care system for Medicaid expansion during the time that we were in interim, we were out of session. So there's been no input or very little input from the legislature. Kurt says after the Medicaid expansion goes into effect, it should get easier to fund. After the first year, we, should, we expect savings in a lot of areas. Really, there'll be savings in the mental health arena um, in terms of our substance use disorder treatment as well as other mental health treatment should go down in cost as we deal with more prevention. As same in other areas, you know, as we spend money on prevention, we should reduce costs in other areas. Even as lawmakers gather that crucial budget information in hearings, they're leaving the Capitol to gather input for this year's redistricting. They've been holding town hall meetings like this one in Woodward earlier this week. We are in uh, Representative Dobrinsky's uh, district, so uh, yes, you are. yes, um, we'll see about that in the redistricting map. So. <laughs> Lawmakers are working with estimates at this time. The census figures are due on April 1st. We thought it'd be best to allow the people to really own this process. We're able to get pretty accurate uh, projections and estimate, estimated numbers from 20, 2019 numbers that we have. The redistricting could result in some suburban and urban voters being added to rural district roles. I love my rural community. That's where our solid roots come from, and that's where I'm grateful to participate. So that's why I hope I get to stay very rural. Representative Denise crosswhite Hayter's district includes part of Canadian County, which happens to be a major growth area in Oklahoma. You'll see that um, Canadian County, once again, is the fastest growing county. It was fastest growing county after the 2010 census. Right now, estimates show that it is, again, the fastest growing county. Oklahoma has had some overall growth, as we're projecting, um, since the last census. Um, and that will affect the size of each district. But really, what you see is this transformation in this population shift. There could be issues with the census getting finalized numbers to the states by its deadline. The Census Bureau director is resigning as questions surface about the accuracy of the numbers. We do get to the point where we absolutely have to have those accurate numbers from the U.S. Census Bureau. So what will happen, I imagine, is there'll have to be a conversation uh, within the Supreme Court here in Oklahoma talking about what that allows, what we're allowed to do in that situation. Something we've never really had to deal with. Even with state lawmakers working ahead on redistricting, if the Census Bureau doesn't issue finalized numbers by the end of May, it could lead to a special session. Jason Doyle, The Oklahoma News Report. Jason, thanks. 
And in the weeks ahead, we will be providing team coverage of the 58th legislature.